Look at this. Today, we're gonna make the world's tiniest mead. So today, I have this very, very tiny um, honey sample. I got this from a Walmart and it's of course a sample. And look at this thing, super tiny. When I saw it, I was first thinking, you know, this is just good for me to try this uh, raw wildflower honey. But I also think it'd be funny to make a tiny mead. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this and we're gonna use this container. We're gonna ferment in it. We're gonna do everything. So my recipe today is um, 1.87 pounds of honey. Uh, like, not actually, I'll probably use 0.9 ounces of honey. A um, little bit of water, and I'm gonna be using a Lalvin um, D47 yeast, like literally a couple grams. So, this is a silly video, but let's see what happens. I just wanna see if I can ferment in this. So, I've already opened it some. Obviously, the honey is filling up the entire container, so I couldn't put any water in. I'm actually gonna pour out some of this honey into here. So I have some room for some water. I, you know, I don't even know if this is gonna work, but why not? It seems silly. So that's about half of this is honey. Let's go ahead and pour some water into here. And I'm gonna shake it up. As far as a um, hydrometer reading, that's not gonna happen. I don't really know what ABV this is gonna be, but we're gonna find out um, if it even works in the first place. And as far as an airlock is concerned, we are gonna need to um, make shift one for this. So I could try to use a real, air, real airlock here, but obviously um, that's not exactly gonna fit on top. So I'm gonna shake this up real fast, and then, yeah, we're gonna see what happens next. All right, I've mixed everything up. That is our starting must. Doesn't that look fun? Let's go ahead and take our Lavin D47, not rehydrated or anything, Sprinkle just a little bit on top of it. And, um, you know, I think, there we go. Oh, that's more than enough. Okay, so I'm gonna shake it up again. And for my airlock, there we go. Shook up, you see the yeast in there. My airlock is gonna be a small, tiny pin pricked hole in the top of this lid. Yep, there we go. So, it's hard to see, I'll, I'll pour it out. But there's a little hole up here, just big enough to where the it can breathe. Um, now, one thing I can also do to really make sure this doesn't do anything is put a little cheesecloth, which I'll do that real fast. Just to make sure there's nothing uh, that can get in there, I have put a little cheesecloth around it. You can see on the top there, there's my hole. So this has a room to breathe. We're gonna let this bad boy ferment and we have ourselves a very tiny mead. Hey look, we're fermenting. All right, our mead has finished. It has been like two weeks. I mean, I've let it ferment out. It fermented, took about a week and a half. You can see here, it's pretty, pretty tiny, pretty clear as well. And uh, I have shaken it up a little bit just by accident from moving it around. But I think this is after the primary. It's time for a quick taste test. Now, this mead, it's pretty young, but that doesn't mean it can't be good. So, let's try it. That's pretty good honey. Pretty sad I only have a little shot of it, but oh well. Talk about a tiny mead. If I had a whole gallon of that, this would be a different day, that's for sure. Well. I made a pretty good mead, it's a pretty tiny mead. Hope you've enjoyed the world's tiniest mead. No hydrometer readings. I tried to find some little tiny bottles, but the truth is they don't make small enough bottles to fit our tiny mead. So I think we've accomplished something big today. We have made the world's tiniest mead. And I challenge you to make the world's tiniest mead as well. Go buy yourself some sampler honey, throw some water in it, and go for it. Thanks for watching. See you guys in another video. Cheers.